So we're asked to determine the magnitude of the resultant force and its direction measured clockwise from the positive x-axis. So our approach is going to be to figure out what the component um, of our resultant force is in the x direction by summing together all the individual parts. And then we're going to do the same thing in the y direction. And by summing in the y direction, we should get the y component of the resultant force. And once we know these two components, we should be able to figure out the overall magnitude and also the direction. So let's start with the x direction. So we're going to have to split up each of these forces um, into x and y parts. So if we start with the 51, we're going to, see, going to see that the x part is going to be like something like this. And the y part, if we make it a triangle, is going to be this side here. Okay. So the x part is going to be this horizontal bit, and it's going to be 50. It's going to be the adjacent side, so it's going to be cos of the angle, so cos 30, remembering that this is always going to be a right-angled triangle in here. And we need to think about whether it's pointing in the positive or the negative x direction. And you can see this here is pointing in the positive x direction. So we're going to leave it as positive in the equation. All right, so let's move on to this next one. And again, we're going to need to divide it into x and y components. So this time the x component is going to be this way. And the y component is this way. So the size of this line is going to be 65, which is the hypotenuse here. And it's again going to be the cos component, so cos of 45. Okay, and thinking about whether it's in the positive or the negative x direction, this one is pointing backwards to the negative direction, so it's going to go in the equation as a negative. All right, so the only one left is this 70 newtons, and this one is completely on the x-axis, so that means it's only going to have an x direction, which makes it really easy. It's pointing in the positive x direction, so it's just going to be plus 70, okay? And this here all adds up to the total or the resultant force in the x direction. And if you type all these numbers in a calculator, you find that they come out to about 67.34. And since all of them are in newtons, this too is also going to be in newtons. All right, so now we just need to repeat this process except for the y direction. So again, let's start with the 50 Newton force and the Y component of it is going to be the opposites. Um, so the sine component of 30. So it's going to be 50 sine 30 and thinking about whether it's going up or down, it's going downwards, which is the negative Y direction. So it's going to go in as a negative. The next one is this part here of the 65. So it's going to be 65. Again, it's the opposite side. So it's going to be sine 45. And it's also pointing downwards in the negative y direction. So it's going to go in as a negative. This one here didn't have a y component, so it's not going to affect the equation. So we can just say that all of this is equal to the resultant in y. And if you type it in a calculator, your answer ends up being about negative 70.96 newtons. All right. So we've now got our two components of our resultant force. Now we just need to work out what the magnitude and the direction are for this overall resultant. So let's draw it out, make a bit of a graphical representation. So we know that the X component is positive 67.34. So it's going to be in the positive X direction. Let's write it in. Sorry, 67.34 newtons. And this one here is going to be in the negative y direction since it's a negative. So it's going to be pointed down. All right. So this is size of 70.96 newtons downwards. Now we just need to figure out the overall resultant, which is when we join these together. And let's call this FR. Okay, so again, since this is, you know, looking at x and y directions, um, these are always going to form right angled triangles when you have the X and the Y components. So using our um, Pythagoras theorem rule for right angled triangles, we can figure out that the resultant FR is going to be the square root of the two other parts, two other sides, I should say. So 67.34 squared plus 70.96 squared. 
So this here comes out to be about 97, we'll round it to 0.8 newtons. And the other thing we needed was the direction, and it wanted it measured from the positive x-axis. Okay, so if we're going to measure it from the positive x-axis, it's the same as this angle in here, because this here kind of represents the x-axis. So now that we actually know the length of all three sides, because we've worked out fr here, it doesn't really matter whether you use sine, cos, or tan to figure out this value. But I'm just going to work with tan, since we've already got the ones appropriate for it drawn on the diagram. So remember that tan is the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite side is 70.96 and the adjacent side is 67.34. So if you work this out, your angle becomes about 46.5 degrees. So these are the two final answers um, for which to answer this question. So that's all there is. See you in the next video.